In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what your first step should be after building your brand new PC. Howdy, my name is Timmy here with Sirius Power PC. And yes, I'm on the floor of my office because I don't currently have space on my desk because my old computer is still plugged in and I don't want to swap out this with my old computer because I'm actually going to be swapping desk locations very very soon so yes I'm here on the floor if you wouldn't mind going ahead and subscribing that would greatly show your support we're over 30,000 subscribers strong and we're just growing more every single day also leave a like if you want to see more videos recommended in your algorithm like this one so let's go ahead and get straight into what to do with your PC after you've built it. So I'm guessing that you've turned your PC on. You've probably tested to see if the lights come on and made sure that, you know, it stays on for more than two seconds at a time. Well, you're going to need a couple things to do this. So, and I figure you know this, but just in case this is your first time building a PC and having a PC at all, here's a couple things you're going to need. You're going to need your PC itself, obviously. You're going to need a monitor of some kind that plugs into your graphics card. Make sure to plug the monitor into your graphics card, not your motherboard. This is an issue that I made when I was first new to PC building that I very quickly learned is completely and totally wrong. You're also going to need a mouse. I have the Razer Basilisk V3. We're not sponsored, I just really like the mouse. Then you're also going to need a keyboard. Yes, this keyboard's built out of Legos. Don't ask me why. Finally, you're going to need two USB sticks. So the first one is the latest version of my BIOS for this motherboard, because this motherboard that I have was put out, it wasn't put out yesterday, is what I'm trying to say. So it's going to have updates for it, and it could run into some issues with the RAM, it could run into some issues reading different components, so this BIOS update should make sure that it's not going to do that. You want to have one USB with the BIOS update, and we'll be making a video soon on how you can get this BIOS update onto your USB stick, but you're also going to need a copy of Windows 10 with the Windows Media Creation Tool. I even have it labeled Windows 10 because I've used this drive for a couple other PCs. So I'll also be making a tutorial on how to get the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool onto your USB stick. I'll leave both of those in the links in the description down below once they're made, but those are videos that are going to be coming up in the next couple weeks. So. Once you have all this together, go ahead and plug both your PC and your monitor in and again run your HDMI display port, whatever type of cable you're using, run that from your monitor into your graphics card. And without further ado, let's go ahead and power on our PC. All right. So, once you power it on, you should be able to get to a BIOS screen similar to this. Now, before you do anything else, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of things. So the first thing we want to do is look at our CPU temperatures. Our CPU temperature is hovering right around 35 degrees Celsius. What you want to look for is temperature steadily increasing and dramatically increasing because if your temperature is going up, say, like a degree Celsius every second, you need to look at your CPU, make sure that the thermal paste is covering the entire CPU, make sure your fans are plugged in properly. That's typically an airflow issue as well whenever the, uh, the temperature is rising steadily. So go ahead and look at that if you're having issues, but you should see your temperature hovering within a degree or two or three you should see your temperature hovering within a few degrees of one number and mine's hovering right around 35 degrees celsius so that's good so we're going to check a couple of things so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our cpu is red and it is our memory size we'll look a bit more into that in a minute our motherboard temperature is right around 30 degrees celsius that's good our DDR speed, as you can see, is 4,800 megahertz, despite the fact that we have, I believe, 6,400 megahertz RAM. I'll show you what's the problem with that here in just a minute. But for now, we're going to go ahead and click here on memory, and that should 
show us. As you can see in our build, we have the RAM slotted in RAM slots 2 and 4, which is what our motherboard manual recommended for this type of RAM, this speed of RAM. And as you can see, both of those DIMMs are read by the motherboard. So that's good. We don't have an issue with that. Now, the way you update the BIOS on this motherboard specifically, it is going to vary by motherboard, but what you do is use a tool called MSI mFlash. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our BIOS update, make sure it's not the Windows update, please, whatever you do, make sure it's not the Windows update. And we're going to go ahead and take this and plug it in to the back of our computer. I like to plug the USB directly into the motherboard for this. I believe you could use the front panel ports, but it's just a better idea to plug it straight into your motherboard. You're updating the motherboard anyways. Now that we have that USB installed, we're gonna go ahead and come here to mFlash, and we're going to go ahead and click yes. Now, this is very important. If you have animals, remove them from your room right now. If you have unstable power in your house, maybe go ahead and buy a UPS. That way, if your power cuts off, you don't have to worry about critical issues being made because there can be some really, really bad issues. Like your PC could literally just be an expensive paperweight if you were to lose power or turn off your PC during the BIOS update. So as you can see right here, we have our Kingston Data Traveler 3.0. The file in particular that we need to install, the BIOS update is right here, the file path. So we're going to click on that, make sure you know your file path. Are you sure you want to select this file? Yes, and BIOS is updating. This is when you remove the pets from your room because this is very, very important that, that nothing go wrong. And it is a fairly slow process. It will probably take two to maybe five minutes depending on your motherboard, but it's an important process. It's important so that you don't run into issues with your memory with your CPU, with just really all aspects of your PC could be affected by this BIOS update. So it's important that you do the BIOS update. However, make sure you don't unplug it. <laughs> as tempted as you may be to power off your PC, this is the part of the PC build where you just don't power it off at all. You don't uh, mess with anything. If you're, you know, if you're, I just don't mess with it. Don't mess with your PC during this time. Just wait for it to BIOS update. Watch it while it's BIOS updating just to make sure nothing awful happens, but this is the part of the build where you just need to be careful. Just don't touch your keyboard. Don't touch your mouse. Don't touch the power button. Don't touch anything on the wall that's plugged in. Just in the words of the kids, let it cook. All right. It just powered itself off. You could be really, really tempted to be like, oh, dang it, something's wrong, and unplug it. Don't do it. Just leave it plugged in. Just l let it stay. Some different stuff may happen in your computer depending on what kind of motherboard you have. Your motherboard may test individual parts. Just just let it, let it sit, let it do its thing, and wait for the BIOS screen to come back up. All right, so... Select CPU cooler type. We have here boxed cooler, tower air cooler, or water cooler. We have an AIO, so that's going to be water cooler, which is what was selected. That's good that that's already selected. So now that we've updated our motherboard, we can see here that the BIOS version should be the exact same as our, our installation media. So go ahead and cross-reference that with the website that you got it from. But I'm going to go ahead and unplug this USB stick and put it off to the side because we should be done with it for now. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so I was wondering under the storage option, my uh, my SS or my NVMe SSD didn't pop up immediately. But as you can see, if you go to advanced mode and come here to settings, you can see that my SSD is present there. Okay, so what we'll do now is go ahead and plug our Windows 10 USB in right like that. It did light up properly, so it's reading that USB like it should. And we're going to save config and exit. So, what that should do is it should now begin reading our Windows 10 
installation media and give us that option to install that. All right, so once you get this popped up here, we're gonna install English United States, English United States and US keyboard. We'll hit next and we'll go ahead and install now. So I do have a product key, but for simplicity's sake for right now, we're not gonna enter it. We're gonna decide to enter that later. So we're gonna click, I don't have a product key. And we want to install Windows 10 Home. Go ahead and definitely read through the entire privacy policy. Okay, cool, I've read the whole thing. Accept license terms and hit next. Okay, we're gonna choose install Windows only. We want to install it on our NVMe SSD, that way it boots faster. So it has that as drive one. Go ahead and double check your uh, gigabyte size, because for example, you see I have eight terabytes on my hard drive, whereas I have two terabytes on my SSD. So that is the correct option. We're going to make sure that's locked in and click next. And now it is installing Windows. So go ahead. Uh, go get a snack or something. With the BIOS update, you don't really want to leave and go do anything else because in the event that there's an error, you want to be there to fix it, you want to be present. Whereas with the Windows installation, it's don't leave your house, obviously, but you know, you can go do something else while Windows is updating. We decided to take off a little bit there. So what we're gonna do is click here on United States, click yes. This is the right keyboard layout. There's no option for Lego keyboard. <laughs> I just unironically made my PC password beans. I would not like to have Siri but Windows. <laughs> I forgot how fun it is to look at some white text while nothing happens. Goodness. What a rush. All right, Windows is installed. So now that Windows is properly installed, I'm actually going to get this set up with the internet and get it set up. Actually, hold on, there is one more thing I wanna show you. I wanna show you how to turn on your XMP. That way you can actually fully use your RAM. So I'm going to go ahead and restart that. Spam the delete key to get to BIOS. Yes! <laughs> We're going to check our XMP profile real quick because our RAM is not being fully utilized. It's only 4,800 megahertz, whereas we want it to be more than that. Okay, so XMP profile one is the full utilization of our RAM. Okay, all right, so we need to utilize the the full extent of the RAM. We'll go ahead and, uh, okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so save configuration and exit. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Restart our PC, then when it comes back on, I'm gonna go into the BIOS just to check and make sure that the RAM is being fully utilized. All right, and as you can see, once we save and exit with that configuration, you can see that our DDR speed up here is up to 6,400 megahertz, which is our RAM's full capability. So that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. I haven't made any changes to the BIOS settings, I'm aware. Um, if y'all want to see more tutorials like this showing you what to do once you have built your PC, I can show y'all more complicated like ways to work with Windows, how to upgrade to Windows 11, stuff like that. Uh, I can show y'all all sorts of different stuff about the different drivers and whatnot. But that's going to do it for today's video because pretty much my goal of this video was to get you into Windows. And as you can see when I type in beans under my password, I am fully signed into Windows. So thank y'all so, so much for watching. My name is Timmy here with SeriousPowerPC.com. Be sure to check out our affiliate program in the link in the description down below so that you can make some extra money referring friends to our PCs. Thank y'all so, so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to join the 30,000 and more that I already have. My name is Timmy here with Serious Power PC, and I'm gonna stand up now because my legs are pretty sore because I've had them folded this entire time. I'll talk to y'all later.